Secret Invasion Episode 2 has just come out. We've seen it. Let's do a review, our takes, and uh, go over what happened. Felicity, what are your initial thoughts after watching this episode? This was a better episode for me. I, I really do feel like maybe they should have released both episodes instead of doing the week to week. It might have helped with the viewership to get a little bit more, you know, traction going. Because uh, unfortunately, this is like behind Miss Marvel as far as like actual viewership for the MCU shows. And that's not a good place to be. Damn, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely not great. But uh, I agree with you that this episode, I did enjoy it better than the last episode. I wasn't a huge fan of the first episode. But after watching this, I would say I'm into the story. I'm going to keep watching for sure. And I'm interested to see where this goes. I liked this episode because we actually got more, I felt like more tangible conversations. Like we got a few one-on-one -on -one conversations with people uh, and we saw more actual development of Fury and where he's at and also, you know, backstory about the scrolls. So I feel like we got some information here. So I was, I was pretty okay with this episode. It just, when it ended, I was like, damn, that was an hour. Like it did not feel like that long. Yeah, it was kind of uh, a little bit of a slog for me mm. uh but like i said overall i say it's probably a seven out of ten so slightly better uh than last week's episode and i i can definitely you know see myself watching the next episode uh to see what else they have going on yeah i i would give it about the same i think a seven out of ten i think this gave me hope that they could uh increase my rating in future episodes i think that i might become more invested in this story so it did get me more intrigued but it's still not you know hitting um, as hard as it could this this conversation specifically with fury got kind of upset and things i was like okay we're actually seeing you i appreciated that when he started yelling i was like finally you're doing something <laughs> I kind of wanted him to get to the point here because I mean, this is after Maria Hill has died. And to be honest, I don't know that I really liked how they handled it. We did get to meet her mother, um, you know, a little bit later, uh, mm -hmm. who was upset obviously with, with Fury because he was there when her daughter uh, was killed. But I don't know that she was necessarily, I mean, she was honored officially, but you know, for me, it was just like, it just didn't feel like it was enough. Um, yes. I don't know. What about you? I definitely agree. Yeah, I wanted to mention this, this scene as well, because I'm glad that they acknowledged her death. Um, last episode, we were kind of saying that it just felt really quick, like they just kind of glossed over it. So they gave a scene, you know, acknowledging her death and that she really believed in Fury. But it felt like a weird acknowledgement. Like this... The scene, what her mom said and everything to Fury, it felt like it could have been in any movie. It didn't feel very like personalized to this character that we've known for so long. Um, so I don't know. It left me with a weird taste in my mouth at the end. I was like, hey, that's it for this character? Like, I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't quite, you know, a Han Solo where, you know, they killed him in one movie and then the next movie they basically hardly ever mentioned them <laughs> it was so it was better than that uh but i don't know if how much better uh that it was uh but uh i and i i skipped ahead but i just i it it kind of irked me because you know that conversation that fury and talos were having um you know get to the point i don't need to know that you know history between I know I, I know people are probably going to disagree with me, but um, all that stuff that happened between him and his mother, I mm -hmm. don't know that that was necessarily re relevant to the conversation. He basically just wanted to know, hey, what haven't you told me? <laughs> yeah. it was really but then long we got we all the fried it. chicken and you know <laughs> riding in the colored car, and I was just like, what the fuck does this have to do? <laughs> <laughs> he's really not himself he's talking about random shit <laughs> yes and and and, it, and and he just wanted talos to say hey um yes this this invasion is happening it's been happening but you've been out to lunch in space <laughs> and I, i'm still really looking for a great reason why especially when we get to the end and i won't give that spoiler out with there are going to be spoilers in this video for you guys Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, obviously, 
we we do get history in this episode between Fury and Gravik and their initial meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which is kind of interesting. Uh, basically, it appears that he's trained him uh, in some sort of way. And Gravik obviously has a lot of resentment uh, toward Fury uh, for basically not fulfilling his promise, uh, you know, to find them a home. Still needing to know why it's taking so long. Um, you know, they did name drop Carol Danvers in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe at some point we are expecting Captain Marvel uh, to show up. I'm guessing probably in the last episode if we actually do get an appearance by her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, what did you think about this, you know, reveal of the relationship between he and Gravik? Yeah, I mean, it was interesting, especially how young Gravik was and just seeing um, how this kind of started. And it does make Gravik's defining factors more understandable. Like, you know what? I would be mad, too, if I was told this is a temporary thing. And then uh, Nick Fury just went off and fucked off to space. That's frustrating. I feel like they just kind of need to sit down and have a conversation. Uh, Some communication could go a long way for these people. But yeah, I think it definitely made Gravik and just the scrolls in general more understandable, more relatable. So I was happy about that because one of my criticisms last episode was that they just kind of threw us in here and expected us to know what happened. Um, I was not going to rewatch Captain Marvel for this. I'm not going through that again. <laughs> well, actually, I don't think that you need any uh, any introduction to Captain Marvel before this at all. I mean, it's because mm-hmm. so far... Um, you know, we're just getting the interactions between the humans and the Skrulls. Um, and, you know, Fury does say to Talos, yeah, I don't think that this whole thing between the humans and the Skrulls is going to work, basically. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, it's kind of 30 years too late, you know, uh, for... <laughs> <laughs> my bad for this uh so uh i don't know man there's some conflicting things going on here um you know we we get reintroduced to uh one of the avengers uh roadie war machine yeah um you know <laughs> what did you think about roadie showing up in this i don't know he felt weird i think he might be a scroll especially him you know spoilers but saying you know fury you're fired i was like sir uh it was very off-putting i mean i was happy to see him and it was kind of funny um you know his interactions during this meeting like respectfully fuck off <laughs> basically uh, yeah uh it was weird um mm-hmm. you know you so you really thought that you were going to bring Nick Fury into a bar or actually I guess it was a restaurant where they were supposed to have a drink together uh, and have a talk. Uh, And even though this thing, this thing went wrong in Russia, you really thought you were going to bring him to this place and say you're fired and not have him go off. And (laughs) (laughs) I just, that was just so odd. Um, You know, I, I, I didn't expect that, but he also admits that he knew about the scrolls as well. Did you catch that part? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, actually. Yeah, he said in a meeting like 15 years ago or something. Um, and I was like, okay, really? <laughs> so an actual real-life Avenger besides Car- Carol Danvers knew about the scrolls. Uh So, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I... I feel great about that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Especially his um, immediate like dismissal of the fact that the scrolls are here. I mean, I guess that's the point. It's going to be what uh, the driving force for Fury, but doesn't doesn't feel great. That's for sure. I agree. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I liked seeing Rhodey. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think it just like you said it, maybe he's probably just a scroll and maybe we have to just write it off but it was just it was not a good showing uh for, for <laughs> this. yeah uh you know and we also did get uh one of the scrolls getting captured uh and 
tortured, really. Um, you know, there's no other way to put it. Yeah. Um, you know, the MI6 chick, uh, and I can't remember her name, showed up uh, and took over from the Russians. And uh, she cut off his finger and injected him with some sort of uh, chemical that made him feel like he was burning. Uh, and of course, he squealed like a pig after that. <laughs> <laughs> And then eventually his friends show up uh, and they ask him, hey, did you say anything? And he's like, oh, just some lies. And of course, they know right away that he (laughs) is lying. (laughs) So they pick him up and then they drop him off into a grave. Uh, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, that was, uh, I'm interested to see where that goes with them discovering the safe house and everything, but I don't know. When I was watching this scene, at first I was like, why do you have to show the finger being cut off? Uh, And then I understood when it was green, but I was just like, ooh, no, thank you. Um, (laughs) Yeah, but I think, uh, you know, shown in that that scene, another character that we could chat about is... Talos's daughter Gaia because I think that she is going to go through some stuff throughout this series she's very suspicious trying to figure things out and this is all going to blow up in her face I think um what did you think about her whole kind of interactions throughout this episode she is clearly uh not trusting things um I guess after being told that uh her group was responsible for killing her mom by her father um so she's trying to do her own little reconnaissance, I guess, uh, and try to figure out, you know, you know, get to the bottom of what Gravik is actually planning. Um, and we actually do get a scene where he's basically meeting with a bunch of world leaders. Like I, the, one of them was the head of NATO. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them was the prime minister of the UK. Um, and we did have a, a, a US representative uh, there and uh, you know basically they kind of swear fealty to him and say hey he's going to be our squirrel general um, but we have one person that's like yeah no I'm not uh, I'm not in this and they just let her go and I was just like what you have to know that eventually they're going to come for you and they mm-hmm. probably know that you're trying to set them up right <laughs> what did you think about this whole thing yeah no exactly when they let her go i was like first of all i didn't think they would actually let her go um but then obviously she's gonna you know let this get out so maybe gravik is using that to his advantage to let um you know fury and talos know what he's up to and that you know he means business for sure so that was kind of another odd point i don't know i i agree i was like why are you letting this girl leave um i think they're gonna get her but yeah, it was interesting. Um, everyone was kind of against Gravik, and then he gave a little speech, and I guess he did have some uh, some support from the Prime Minister. And basically, just through force, uh, everyone is down for him. So I don't know how that will go over politically and in the war. I, I think that the person, I don't know who it was, but the, the girl who got let go, I think that she had a good point. Like, y'all don't need more war. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that this isn't going to end well for them, but it was a really powerful scene in showcasing Gravik's rise to power and how that is happening, especially since we did see the the flashback to him um, when he started on Earth and this, this journey with Fury and everything. All right. And we do have to, for a, again, spoiler, uh, you know, that last scene uh, with Fury and his uh, wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apparently he does have a wife. Uh, remember in Winter Soldier when he told Steve Rogers, oh, my wife kicked me out. Um, so we didn't know back then that he had an actual wife and she turns out to be a scroll. <laughs> so what did you think about this revelation? Wait, when did they, when did they say she was a scroll? Because I have written in my notes that I think she is, but I didn't see this review. Okay. Um, you'd have to, uh, if you, if you want to, you can do it now. You can actually scroll back, uh, because initially when he's coming oh. into the house, you can see that there's a scroll person there. 
Uh, but when he eventually comes around the corner, she turns into a human. Damn, okay, I definitely missed that. Holy shit. Okay, because I, I got those vibes, but I didn't actually see it confirmed. This changes things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. Okay, there it is. She's looking like She-Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow, okay. Interesting. Now I, I want to know more about her for sure and kind of what side she's on. Um, if she's supporting him or I don't know, maybe Gravit got to her. Interesting. <laughs> Well, yeah, because this is the Skrull woman that introduced Gravik to Fury. Mm. So uh, they've actually, I guess, been together probably off and on a really long time. Uh, So I wouldn't be surprised if if the possibility that she's compromised uh, by this stuff that's happening with Gravik. Um, So, yeah, this was definitely a way more substantial episode. Uh, for me um, still not quite there because I feel like a lot of these things that are being done by people uh, not just Fury but you know a lot of people I, I'm just like what's what's your goal here <laughs> <laughs> so and I guess that that's the point of the show is to kind of keep you on your toes uh, keep you guessing um, any other final thoughts that you have about uh, about the show I think that's it. I I agree with you. Throughout this whole show, I'm very suspicious of everyone, which is kind of fun, like trying to figure out what's happening and who's, you know, is everyone who they say they are? Probably not. Um, So it's a really fun show in that aspect. Um, It's just, I don't know, the first episode was difficult for me to get into it. But now that we're into it, I'm um, enjoying the story. I'm along for the ride. Um, and Zam, I have some things to think about now that I know that uh, his wife is a scroll. <laughs> Does that change your rating on this episode? <laughs> uh, not really. It's just this feels more substantial now that I know that, that with this reveal than before. I was just kind of like, oh, that he they had a lot of conversations in here, not a lot of action. But this is a big reveal, I think. Um, so I'm excited to see where this goes in terms of the show and also his wife and everything. There's, this is a really relationship character driven show and I like that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see more and yeah, I'm sure that we will have more videos with the coming season on all of the other episodes. So stay tuned for that. Check out our shorts. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Catch y'all later.